I want you to welcome to the stage uh, Dr. Stephen Wolf, who's a clinical psychologist, who talks about disarming anger, both for individuals, couples, and group therapy. Dr. Wolf. Good morning. I'm excited about being able to be here and share my work with you. I first came in touch with the uh, need for me to deal with anger with my four-year-old son. <laughs> my father was a rageaholic. He was an immigrant from Europe during the Holocaust, and he was an angry guy. And I absorbed his anger, as, as we do if you're raised in that kind of environment. But I didn't realize the degree to which I had absorbed his anger until my four-year-old son spilt his proverbial milk. And I felt my father's rage in my body. It was like I was being possessed. It was invasion of the body snatchers. And I said to myself, under my breath, aloud to myself, I'm not going to do to him what was done to me. So I whispered, thank goodness. And whenever I was angry, I would whisper. And he knew when I was angry, but he had no fear. And then there was a secondary benefit. If I wanted to get his attention, I'd go, hey, Jen. And I wouldn't have to raise my voice, because he would listen. I didn't know that 10 years later, I'd be working with hundreds of men coming straight out of prison, streets, jail, who were saying to me, hey, doc, I got an anger problem. If I lose my temper one more time, I can go to jail for 25 years. So I took a pretty popular anger management program, taught it for three or four or five months, wasn't doing the trick, and I felt the responsibility to help these people, like Jim was taking. I, was, I felt the responsibility to help these guys. And so I developed a method, I call it Taming Your Anger with Emotional Intelligence, a book. I taught it in women's jail, I taught it to a group of teenagers, uh, delinquents on probation. As a matter of fact, we're finishing up a documentary movie called Remedy for Rage. And you can watch a couple of minutes, I'll have it on my computer, where I work with these kids. I do it in my private practice all the time. And I found that it's important for me to deal with anger as part of my work. Clearly, we have a lot of violence in our society. And all too often, we have a lunatic with an automatic weapon assassinating people. I'm afraid that that's going to be happening for a while. But what about the rest of us normal folks? What do we do with our anger? We discharge it with those people we love the most. We get pissed at our kids, at your husband, at your wife, at whoever. And there's no real recognition of it unless it escalates to some higher level. I find that therapists are often reticent to deal with anger in the therapy session. I don't know if it's because they lack the tools or if there's fear, but I have found that the therapy session is an ideal opportunity to teach our clients, first of all, to understand anger, and then how to channel the anger and express it in ways that cause no harm. And in fact, I train people to teach themselves how to train their brain to respond differently to the signal of anger before it comes out of your mouth. By the way, I am recently uh, got a grant to work with veterans who I'm training to teach the program to other veterans. And I'm pretty passionate about this and hoping to bring it into a school system to change the school. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to share with you how I prepare my clients to deal with anger in therapy. Then I'll show you once they're prepared how simple it is to disarm anger during the therapy session. And then what I'd like to do is give you an experience of what it's like to develop a new habit pattern in response to the signal of anger. So as Ed Schultz would say, let's go to work. I begin with a very important concept. It goes like this. Nothing positive will happen when I unconsciously, automatically react with anger, ever. Nothing positive will happen. Now I would imagine that most of the folks in this room will agree with that statement, but that's not a no-brainer for everybody. I can tell you, working with these kids, I would say that and they'd say, hey, what are you kidding? With my anger, I can take your lunch money. 
I can do what I want with you. I can feel like a big shot. I can have my way with you. And my answer to them has come to be, how's that working out between you and your probation officer? <laughs> Consequences for teenagers, especially if you're living in a world where you don't see too many positive options in the future, Consequences is a big deal. That's a very important concept. Once we've established that, now I go into defining anger and an emotion. I break it down into what I refer to as the building blocks for emotional intelligence. I'm going to share some of that with you. So, we begin with the three brains, which many of you are familiar with. You have a primitive reptilian brain that's breathing you right now, beating your heart, adjusting your body temperature, digesting your breakfast, primitive reptilian brain. You have a thinking brain that's taking these sounds and hopefully making some sense out of them. Your thinking brain has memory. You can remember what you had for breakfast. You can plan and imagine what's going to happen later. You can do mathematics and know that five and five is seven or, yeah, seven, nine. That's your thinking brain. You have an emotional brain. Now here's the punchline. The emotional brain produces emotion the way the reptilian brain produces heartbeats. You can't help it. That's a huge concept. Because as soon as you understand that, you no longer have to go along with all the judgments that you have and criticism that you have of yourself for experiencing anger in the first place and other people. It's a liberating concept. You can't help feeling angry. There are primary emotions and secondary emotions. We've defined an emotion as an impulse produced by your primitive limbic brain. A primary emotion has to do with vulnerability. It's when we feel safe or unsafe, loved or unloved, connected or alienated. And this is where all the stuff of therapy comes in. I feel un unappreciated, I feel unloved, I feel unacceptable, I feel stupid, I feel ugly. All of those painful emotions are primary emotions. A secondary emotion follows a primary emotion and is a shield. It protects us from having to experience the vulnerability of a primary emotion. Anger is a secondary emotion. Anger is a secondary emotion that is produced by your primitive limbic brain as a shield to protect you from experiencing a primary emotion. It has several clear functions. It's an attack. If I get angry at you, I can attack you and push you away. It's a defense, protects me, like putting iron bars on your window. Helps you feel safe inside, but you don't get to go out either. And it actually serves as a discharge for the emotional energy, which is the impulse itself. So, we've defined anger as a secondary emotion produced by your primitive emotional brain that is here to camouflage your primary emotion. So, let's go to the therapy session. Whenever I have a client either talking about, oh, I was pissed at that guy over there, or better still, in a couple or a group session where you see the anger in the room, I'll go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on? And one or both people will say, well, we're angry because, and I'll say, that's great. Anger's a secondary emotion. What's the primary emotion? And in that moment, the anger is disarmed because they know it's okay that you're feeling it. They understand that it's a shield, and now you can do the work of therapy. It's really simple once you've prepared your clients. Well, let me share a recent experience I had actually with a client of mine who was an emergency room doctor. And she would come home. For her, the emergency room was like a battle zone, incredibly intense. And she came home, and the night before she came in for a session with me with her husband, She'd come home and taken her some wedding gifts and thrown them at the oven. And not only did she break the gifts, but she cracked the glass on the oven door. It wasn't possible to deal with couple work without addressing her anger. And so this simple method that I'm about to share with you is designed to help her retrain her brain to respond differently to the signal of anger. So if you would, close your eyes. Take a breath and remember a time when you were angry and you said or did something that caused you regret. A time you said or did something that caused you regret. Now, 
This time, visualize yourself telling yourself, I'm getting angry, before it comes out of your mouth. And visualize yourself reminding yourself, nothing positive is going to happen if I open my mouth right now. And you, again, I would say it to myself under my breath. Nothing positive. And now visualize yourself taking a controlled breath and leaving the situation. And now look at yourself acknowledging that you have changed your behavior and feeling really good about yourself. That's what it means when you've trained your brain to respond to the impulse of anger in a different way. I would love to chat with you over at my table about the idea of what is the therapist's responsibility about dealing with anger in our society. I personally felt a strong responsibility, first for my own anger, and then dealing with the anger for these men and women and kids. But I believe, given the violence that's going on in our culture, that each of us should ask the question, what do we feel is our responsibility here? Can we make a difference? Can we help people dealing with the anger in their lives? At the Wolf Training Institute, we have a vision statement. It goes like this. We are dedicated to reducing violence and increasing emotional intelligence, beginning with ourselves, one person at a time, and passing it on. I hope that this has some value for your discussion, and I thank you very much.